How long should you smell something for? That long? 30 seconds? Five seconds? That's again very individual. It would depend from person to person. If you want to preserve your nose and use your brain, you have to send a signal to your brain to say, turn on. All right? So the idea is, is that when you sniff, you sniff, take it away, and you think about what you smell. When you first do it, that distance between smelling, forgetting what you just smelled, going back, is a couple of seconds. If you do this regularly, that length of time becomes longer and longer until the point that you can actually smell something half an hour after you actually sniffed it. Because the brain's collected the data. You know, it's got the printout there. It just needs to go back to the printout and refer to the printout, yeah, and re-experience it. The, the information is already there, it's already locked in. Yeah? But if you don't allow the brain to smell, what happens is <laughs> yeah, you keep having to go back or you, you hold it under. And all that time you're holding it under, the molecules are going onto your olfactory bulb, yeah, and they're holding there and holding there, yeah. And if you imagine on your olfactory bulb you have receptors. This is your olfactory bulb and it has lots of little receptors. Let's say we were going to smell, we had some red receptors and we had some blue receptors. Yeah? And then we have a smell coming in that has three, three red molecules and has One, two, three, four, seven blue molecules. So this smell goes in onto your receptors and it fires one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What does your nose detect? It detects there's less of the red than there is of the blue. What if now I hold my smelling strip under my nose? What happens? I sniff again. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's now saturated, can't take any more blue. I sniff again. No room for the blue, more room for the red. One, two, three. What happens now is the nose doesn't know which is most, yeah? Because it, it has all the red receptors filled, all the blue receptors filled, and now it doesn't know the difference which one is the main note in the, in the mixture. So that's the purpose of we sniff onto the olfactory bulb, let the olfactory bulb get the information, use the brain, yeah, and then analyze what we did. It takes practice. Yeah, but the idea is, is, is to use the... So you would actually get the point. The point, if you held long enough, if something was only 1% in the formula, that it would smell like it was 50% of the formula. Because eventually, it, it saturates all the receptors as, a, as if it were a 50-50 mixture. Yeah? So when you smell, the first technique is short and sweet. Sniff think, sniff, think, and try and get that time longer and longer. If you're sniffing and then you get sniffing again, it's the same as, you see I don't wear a watch. About six, seven years ago, I used to love watches, I used to collect them, yeah? And I was on my way to an appointment in Bangkok and I was in traffic and it was like quarter to two and the appointment's at two and I looked at my watch quarter to two, 15 minutes. Two minutes later, I look at my watch, it's yeah, 47 minutes, for 13 minutes. 
look at my watch again in another two minutes. What am I not doing? I'm not looking at my watch. My body knows the difference between five minutes and ten minutes and fifteen minutes. Yeah? If we let it, if we depend on the watch, we end up not looking at the watch. So most, if you're smelling and you think you have to smell more and more and more, you're not smelling. You're just taking molecules in, but you're not using the brain to smell. When I'm sniffing something, I don't need to see my chest rise. Why not? There, well, but people do it, but people do it, yeah? <laughs> there are no receptors, odour receptors in the, in the lungs. I'm going to kind of contradict myself later in the course, but yeah, for now, yeah, there are no odour receptors in the lungs. One of the most common questions yeah, from a student is, is it safe to work with these materials day in and day out? To smell 200 materials a day? to have the environment of flavour co compounds and perfume compounds and breathe them in day in, day out. And what's my answer? I don't know. <laughs> because it may be, generally speaking, I don't think that the health of perfumers is any worse than the general population. And compounders who work with the, 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 you know, the, the real quantities of mixing the, the bulk perfume don't seem to have any worse general health. Yeah? Terry's really healthy, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but it may be that in five years' time they say it's... Um, let's think of something that's not, not on, a, on a current list. Hedione is the material that causes cancer. Yeah? So to restrict your uh, uh, exposure to, to these materials that we don't know, that may be proved to be dangerous in the future, why take in more than you need? Yeah? So when you sniff, Because that's, that's the business, that's the business end. Yeah, we don't need it down here. And that's another reason for, for smelling it short and sweet. Yeah? Just sniff, think about it. Let the brain do the work. Yeah? The brain has a lot more capacity. Yeah? So another way that we can smell, using the same technique but exactly the opposite, is to breathe in the mouth 